And my name is Kelvin Filer, and I currently sit as a Los Angeles Superior Court judge, and I sit in the Compton Courthouse, which of course is right smack dab in the middle of beautiful, captivating Compton, California, my hometown, and I'm a proud graduate of Compton High School, the class of 1973, the greatest class in the history of Compton High School. Henry Jefferson was my second grade teacher. We had a school organization called the Safety Patrol. I was elected president of the Safety Patrol. He gave me my first book on parliamentary procedures, so I'm learning early on how you conduct a meeting, how you go about calling for votes, how uh, the majority vote wins, and how you carry out the will of the majority, and how you run a meeting, and so forth. And those are things that uh, oftentimes are equated with being a lawyer and uh, being involved in the legal arena and uh, things that occur in a courtroom. So at an early age in Compton at Rose Trans Elementary School, tied right in with me knowing that I want to be a lawyer in elementary school, uh, he was very, very influential from an academic standpoint of saying, look, this is the type of thing that you need to know and you need to learn. And from there, I went to Walton Junior High School for two years, had great instructors at Walton. And I'm very proud to say that I went to the first graduating or promoting class from Davis Junior High School. Of course, it's David Middle School now. But uh, I attended the first year of Davis, uh, leaving there in 1970, moving on to the greatest high school in the district, Compton Senior High School. And just had wonderful teachers. Uh, Aaron Wade was our principal, a wonderful leader. He was a motivator. He encouraged us to pursue our dreams, but he also made sure that we understood how important it is to have a good quality education, how important it is to have a balanced education. So from an academic standpoint, from a social standpoint, from music, from athletics, he knew that you had to have that type of framework if you want to be successful in life. And I know that, that it's at Compton High School I really learned the tools and developed the discipline to go on and, and go to college uh, and then uh, UC Berkeley Law School and after that uh, taking the California Bar Examination, passing it the first time in 1980 and then ultimately opening up a private practice right here in Compton. So coming from Compton, I had this dream that I wanted to be a lawyer in the city of Compton. Going through the Compton schools, I'm proud to say that I was able to accomplish that dream. I felt, and I think all of us should feel, that after going through this process, after benefiting, benefiting from an education in Compton, that we have an obligation to come back and help others, reach back and help someone else. And so uh, that's been my uh, credo, that's been my commitment, and I intend on doing it for the balance of my life. Uh, my dad, was certainly my role model, he was my hero, and he inspired me to pursue a career in the law because that's what he wanted to do. And when I was in elementary school, he was actually going to law school in the evening. So I, he said, I'm going to be a lawyer. And his idol was Thurgood Marshall. I said, well, Daddy, I'm going to be a lawyer. So I carried a briefcase to the <laughs> elementary school and uh, saying, I'm going to be a lawyer. And I really didn't know what it took at that time. But as I got older, and I started realizing that really lawyers were the individuals who were really making a difference in the civil rights struggle and making a difference in helping people who needed help the most. So I, after doing my research in terms of what does it mean to be a lawyer, what does it take to be a lawyer, I said, yeah, this is, this is something that, that I want to be. I like it. Um, and so uh, I knew I had to get a good education. I knew I had to learn how to read. I knew I had to learn how to understand what it was that I read and be able to uh, orally regurgitate what I had learned and speak in public and be able to understand complex arguments and so forth uh, so that uh, I could apply to college and of course uh, after college you have to go to law school and I knew that I wanted to, to go to a law school in California so I knew that I had to do well. Knowing that early on and again uh, in uh, trying to follow after my father's footsteps um, I focused in and made sure that the education was the primary uh, part of my well-being and my, my upbringing. Those of us who are from Compton, you should say that you're from Compton. I speak at least three or four times a month, either at schools or different functions, and when I'm introduced, I insist on them saying that I was born, raised, and educated in Compton. Uh, in that way, the students who are here now, they uh, will know that, look, here's somebody who's from the community, who had this dream and this goal, and he was able to come through Compton Schools, 
be successful, and then come back and try and help some other individuals. So those are the things I really think that, that we should do uh, in terms of uh, making sure that we uh, uh, show the world that we're proud uh, to be from Compton. Uh, we can't do anything about the media coverage other than make sure that we try and give them positive things to report on. And when you're put in a situation where you can shed some light on that and talk about Compton and talk about the positive aspects, and we aren't ignoring the negative things, we aren't. But too often, the outside media, that's all they portray. So I think we have an obligation to bring some balance as to what's ha actually happening in Compton. And that's one of the reasons why I insist on stating that I was born, raised, and educated in Compton. I insist on sitting in the Compton Courthouse. Uh, I've never sat anyplace else. My law practice is right here in Compton. Uh, I go over and talk to the Compton schools. I have teen court tomorrow that I'm going to be presiding over at Compton Senior High School. And that is the way that we can combat it by letting uh, the world know that we are proud to be from Compton, letting the students who are here no now know that uh, don't be ashamed to say where you are from. And in that way, inch by inch, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, district by district, maybe we can change the world. Who knows? First off, if you live in the Compton district and uh, if your students should be going to Compton schools, let them attend Compton schools. Support the schools. Get involved with the uh, PTAs. Get involved with the school site councils. Get involved with the booster clubs. And do your part to make sure that your child is getting a quality education. Studies have shown that when you have parental involvement, and if you can have decent class sizes, regardless of where the person's from, they can learn, they can do well. Also, I think mentorship is very, very important. So those of us who are working in the, in the area, adopt a school, adopt a student. Make yourself available to them so that if they want to know what it takes to be a, a lawyer, they, my door is always open. I never close this door. I always extend an open invitation to all the students, particularly those at Compton High School, but all of them. Uh, they can come in and talk to me about what does it take to become a lawyer? What does it take to become a judge? What does it take to become a business person? Because I also had a business here. And when I had a business here, I supported the schools. I was involved in the Compton Chamber of Commerce. That reflects some community ownership. And when your children see that, and when the students see that, that's how they will grow. That's what they would learn to do. And it kind of recycles that community involvement and that community pride. So we, can, uh, we all play a part. It's not just the school separately. It's the community, it's the civic, and it's the religious component as well. If we're all a team, if we're all a family, that's the way I think we can really bring about change. And I do uh, think that we can bring about change. I'm not a pessimist in any sense of the word. I see the glass as being half full. And, I, and I'm actually excited about the good things that are going on in Compton, as, as was referenced earlier. We don't hear about them all the time, but we've got some Compton students that are going to Harvard and Yale. Just some schools in L.A. that can't claim that. And uh, so there's some real good things. Test scores are going up. The schools are cleaner. The streets are cleaner, so there are some good things that are going on. Crime is down. You don't hear about that, but it is. And I see it firsthand. So I think we have an obligation to tell that story. The message that I would give to our students is the message that my parents, and particularly my father, uh, gave me and stressed to all of uh, my, myself and my siblings. So whatever your dream is, whatever your goals in life are, you have to understand that education is the key. And we hear that a lot, and the reason you hear that a lot is because it's true. And that's something that my parents instilled in me, and as uh, I grew up in Compton, and I went to school, and went to college, and went to law school, it became readily apparent that they were right, and that's accurate. Because you, it's something that cannot be taken away from you. It's something that allows you to make the necessary network and contacts that you need later in life. Uh, it opens up your eyes to the different possibilities. It gives you the necessary credence, degrees, licenses, or whatever it is, to do whatever it is you want to do. And once you have it, they can't take it away from you. So education is the key, and I would encourage anyone uh, to uh, dream high and aim high, and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because you can. I'm living proof. I'm living proof. So that would be my message, and, and when they make it, come back to Compton and help somebody else.